This film is an adaptation of the classic William Shakespeare play King Lear. Set during the Sengoku period of Japan, Ron tells the story of an aging warlord who decides to abdicate as ruler in favor of his three sons. Ron was the second epic that Kurosawa filmed during the 1980s. Experiencing a personal tragedy during the making of this film and taking time away to mourn, Ron was released on May 31st, 1985 at the Tokyo Film Festival. Ron is a visual wonder with the vibrant and expressive costumes and makeup inspired by classic kabuki theater. Kurosawa was a master at staging beautiful vistas as each frame of this film was reminiscent to an oil painting. There were moments of serene stillness and utter chaos throughout the course of this film and it really shows the mastery of Kurosawa's work. Ron is arguably one of the best adaptations of William Shakespeare's plays and succinctly portrays the turmoil that the warlord faces as his idyllic world falls apart. The film that inspired Sergio Leone's The Man With No Name trilogy, Yojimbo stars longtime collaborator Toshiro Mifune as the title character a wandering samurai who incites a civil war between two rival clans in a ghost town. Yojimbo is one of Kurosawa's most comedic films with the title character relishing and causing chaos between the rival clans. It is quite entertaining to see how both clans vie for Yojimbo's skills, putting out all stops to placate such an unpredictable man. A very entertaining film that has often been imitated but is hard to top, although a handful of films have come close since. Rashomon is one of the most unique and boldest films in Kurosawa's filmography. The film's story is told in four different perspectives, mainly involving the discovery of a dead samurai. Every person involved recounts the events that occurred in the film. As you can expect, each individual version of what really happened differs greatly from the other. Kurosawa drew inspiration from silent film hoping to evoke the beauty of the era before sound was introduced to the medium. Kurosawa also paid close attention to the lighting in an attempt to serve as symbolism for good, bad, or ambiguous. The film challenges the viewer to interpret what is being shown on screen, unlike some films that offer a lot of exposition instead of allowing the audience to think for themselves. Rashomon was the first of its kind, borrowing the non-linear storytelling narrative which is a narrative technique that is used in literature and sometimes film in which events are portrayed out of chronological order or in ways that are not in correlation with the events that occur. Films that use this nonlinear storytelling technique are Courage Under Fire, Lucky Number Slevin, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, and of course, Pulp Fiction. Released on April 26, 1954, Seven Samurai is the epic tale in which a group of villagers recruit seven masterless samurai, or ronin, to protect them from bandits who plan to raid their village. Running at a staggering 207 minutes, Kurosawa brought forth a watershed moment in Japanese film history. The film was painstakingly crafted, with Kurosawa being unrelenting in his vision. The production lasted for 148 days, with two instances of the production being shut down. Each samurai portrayed in the film had to break the common tropes of a typical hero. While all of the men agreed to defend the village and defeat the bandits, each of these samurai were enticed to join this battle for different reasons, a filmic device that is now very common in cinema today. This truly was a groundbreaking film, becoming Japan's highest grossing film and sparking numerous adaptations of Kurosawa's epic the most notable being 1960's The Magnificent Seven, directed by John Ford. This was the first Kurosawa film that I watched. I can even remember how old I was and where I watched it. I was 15 years old with nothing to do on a rainy Saturday afternoon. Laid about on my couch, I began browsing through numerous channels on television. I finally stumbled across the IFC film channel and began watching this epic film. Although at that age I was already exposed to foreign language films before, namely one starring Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, and Jet Li, I was introduced to a whole new world of film and began to delve deeper into the filmographies of Kurosawa and other foreign language filmmakers. Akiru was released on October 9, 1952. 
The film tells the story of Kanji Watanabe, a middle-aged man who worked the same monotonous job for over 30 years. Widowed, he lives with his son and daughter-in-law, who seem to only care about Watanabe's pension and their future inheritance. It seems that he is resigned to a career of inaction as he stays committed to his work and does the bare minimum to survive. Watanabe feels ill one day and misses work for the first time since his wife's death. Concerned, he goes to the doctor and discovers that he has terminal cancer and is given less than a year to live. At first, he is devastated by the news and tries to come to terms with his inevitable death. However, after spending one night in the seedy underbelly of the Tokyo nightlife, he changes his outlook on life and his career, committing heartily to one final project before he dies. Aikiru is my favorite Kurosawa film and the film that had a lasting impact on my life. The story that is told struck a personal chord with me. The character of Kanji Watanabe served as a clear example of how one should approach their life regardless of whether they have been alive for 60 years or 15. This film is truly an introspective piece sharing an interesting take on the meaning of life. It also serves as a bit of a redemption story as well with the main character finding a sense of peace and triumph in his actions over the course of the film. Takashi Shimura's performance as Kanji Watanabe was incredible in which his nuanced and heartfelt demeanor shined through the screen. I truly emphasized with his character and rooted for him to accomplish his goals before his impending death. Aikiru is arguably my favorite film of all time and one that I have rewatched numerous times. While the, th the theme of the film is death, it is a very uplifting story that has resonated with people for years since its release.